Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. As the need to explore alternative sources of energy becomes more apparent, Afro Energy is exploring onshore gas, which the company believes can serve as an alternative power source in South Africa. Sandile Mavuso has a story. Afro Energy, a joint venture between Australian-based gas exploration company Kinetico and South African-based gas company Badimo Gas, has recently received bulk sampling permission from the Department of Mineral Resources, or DMR, for the exploration of 500 million standard cubic feet of gas a year over the next two years. This is as a result of the discovery of onshore gas in Amersfoort in Pumalanga, where Afro Energy has drilled 21 gas exploration core wells since 2011. Through the aid of conventional technology that is internationally proven, Afro Energy is able to drill the gas without fracking. Afro Energy technical head Paul Tromp explains the difference between fracking and the technology Afro Energy uses for its exploration. They're really both onshore the shale gas project in the Karoo that's being talked about. The difference is that project, the gas is contained in shales, which have very low permeability and most likely will require hydraulic fracking. Much of our gas here, even though the gas comes from coal, is contained in sandstones trapped by dolerite intrusions. So the permeability is good. There's no need to frack and our gas uh, will be produced from depths of about 100 to 600 meters. So the wells are low cost and the methane is almost pure. Through exploration, the project showed that coal seams were at depths of between 300 meters and 500 meters, which meant that confining pressures resulted in high gas contents in the coal. However, this was not so deep that pressures had begun to collapse the permeability of the coal. Also, with sandstones found during the exploration, Trump notes that there would be a quick potential revenue from the sandstone horizon before the coal bed methane production. Upon receiving the permit from the DMR, Afro Energy estimates that the commercial returns from the gas at the early stage will provide an initial gross cash flow of about $8 million in the first two years of revenue sales. It can generate power, and in particular, it can generate power with gas turbines which can be started up and stopped for peak period generation. It can be used to produce fertilizer. Uh, that's how Sassel makes their fertilizer at present. It can be used as vehicle fuel. And there's a push to convert more and more vehicles, taxis, buses, lorries, to run on natural gas. And that's one of the markets for this gas as well. Other news making headlines this week. Lightning and Surge Protection and Safety Equipment Supplier, Den Africa, launched its DEN Academy in Johannesburg last month to transfer its knowledge and experience to customers across Africa. This will help curb the effects of lightning strikes by ensuring that African engineers and consultants define effective lightning protection systems. Crema Media staff writer David Oliveira reports. Surgeon Lightning Protection Specialist Dean Africa has pledged its commitment to dealing with the damages caused by lightning with the launch of its Dean Academy, which will equip engineers and consultants in Africa with the knowledge, experience and tools to help protect the lives and investments of Africa's people. The launch of the Academy was a milestone for the company, with Dean Africa MD Alexis Barwaz highlighting that the launch of the Academy was testament to the company's growth since opening in 2013. Our partners have, have really been also the, let's say, the accelerator to all of this. We started with two guys, uh, you know, not, real, uh, not really knowing where we can end up today with 28 uh, partners on board. We're in 10 countries in Africa. Dean Africa Technical Manager Hanno Ulufsa highlighted that lightning protection was a specialized field, which was largely unknown in Africa. Many engineers were unaware of the basic methods and standards of lightning protection prompting Dean to address the knowledge gaps on the continent. There's a big need in the market for, for um, knowledge and in the lighting protection industry is very unknown. So we've created the, the, the DEN services. Um, the DEN services is split up into four sections called uh, the DEN uh, Sport, the DEN Technical, the DEN Academy and the DEN Testing. And with all of this uh, detailed designs, uh, the training and all of this comes from all these sections. Um, the DEN Academy is the one we, we are launching today which we're going to train uh, engineers, um, electricians, installers to, to design their own compliant solutions. For us it's important to, to, to do these uh, correctly according to the standards. 
Um, we are working closely towards the Witt uh, University. Uh, Professor Cuth Cuthbert and you was here today and we handed out uh, our lightning prediction guide to be part of this curriculum. Germany-based holding company Dean Sales and Marketing MD Helmut Push explained the group's global growth strategy and Dean Africa's role in assisting its Vision 2025 strategy. We as Dean, we are the market leader in lightning protection, surge protection and uh, safety equipment. At the moment we are at about 200 million euros turnover yearly and our strategy is actually to more than double that until 2025. We are internationalizing our business. We are going to more countries as South Africa is one of the countries we just established a new subsidiary two and a half years ago. We are the most innovative company in the field of surge protection and lightning protection and that's going to be continued in the future. South Africa is very important to us. It's a strong footprint already what we have here in South Africa and we are targeting even more countries here in Africa and it's our dream. Dean protects Africa. We are protecting people here in Africa, their investments and their assets. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.